So hey everyone and welcome to the channel. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few minutes. My name is Rich and I'm the channel host. And more often than not, we're talking about drones and actually building your own drone business. There's more on this channel as well, years of travel with an Airstream. So if you wanna look back in time, go ahead and peruse the channel. By the way, if you enjoy today's video, be sure to like and subscribe down in the show notes below. All right, so this past weekend, I went out and actually did phase two of a project that I'm gonna be doing for a couple of months for a construction company that's building a new multifamily housing area. So it's actually 100 units. It's a very interesting location here in Prescott. And this is the construction company's first time actually doing drone progression reports. So I just sent out the latest link to them. So I actually build private web pages for the client that are password protected that they can share um, with coworkers and investors. And so far this has been coming along really nicely and the clients are very happy. So over the weekend I did another flight and then compiled some of the information for the construction company. You don't always use everything. But, so what went into this flight? And you're gonna see the flight in just a few minutes. So first off, for doing this construction progression reporting, there is drive time. Fortunately, the location is only 15 minutes from where I live, so that's not a big deal. Getting out and on location, I spent about an hour there. So being on site and then returning was about an hour and a half of my time. The rest of the time was actually sorting through video and stills and stills for ortho mosaics. So first off, let's talk about the workflow of this project. Number one, I go to the location. I actually fly multiple pre-programmed routes that I've created. So the applications that I'm using on the phone for this particular project are Litchi and MapPilot from Maps Made Easy. So MapPilot, I created a, um, a regular flight that I can do for creating an ortho mosaic for the location. And then Litchi was used for the additional still images for a still image slideshow. And Litchi was also used to record pre-programmed flight paths. When I got to the location, I always go to the Kitty Hawk app just to double check. The particular location I'm in actually is not governed. It's uh, not controlled airspace. So I don't have to actually use the Kitty Hawk application to, um, to request permission for that particular flight. It is right on the boundary though, so I always double check it. I also made sure to check the TFRs the night before, um, temporary flight restrictions, because we have had forest fires in the area and some relatively close. Um, I checked the TFRs the night before and also on location, I go ahead and I check for TFRs once again while I'm there in case anything changed overnight. After checking all those things out, I do an, ex an inspection of the drone, which I also do the day before as well. I make sure that all the batteries involved are recharged. Not only the drone batteries, but the iPhone batteries, the iPad batteries. I wanna go out to the location with 100% power. Even though I know this particular location only takes me two batteries, I still like to have the spare batteries because maybe I'll have an idea while I'm there and maybe I'll want to add some things for the client. So with that in mind, there's always the power check the night before and the power check the day of when I'm at the location. We make sure what airspace we're in and we submit for Lance authorization if we're in a location that requires it. Once, once all that's settled, the, um, the first thing I did to make things easy on myself was I actually flew the ortho mosaic model first. Why do that one first? It has 81 still images in it. So on my memory card in my drone, when I do the ortho mosaic first, I'm going to have a pile of JPEGs when I offload things. So I know that that first block of JPEGs is for my ortho mosaic. After I've completed doing the ortho mosaic, I do my video flights. So I had four different video flights to do, which were all pre-programmed with Litchi. And in doing that, that gives me several video files on the card so that when I import it to the computer, I know the first block of JPEGs happens to be for an ortho mosaic or a 3D model. The next block of videos is going to go into my video progression. And then after I'm done with that block of videos, 
I switch over to doing still photos to show off some still locations throughout the site. So I have a block of JPEGs, a block of videos, and a block of JPEGs again. Very easy for me to sort through and figure out what goes with what. I also have a checklist for myself, and I always double check all of the pre-programmed waypoint routes that I've created on Litchi. I've got more waypoint routes than I need because of some of the experimentation that I did in the beginning when I was first documenting this site in July. So with all that said, so there we go. We take the drive out, we inspect the drone, we do our application updates if we need to, um, and then we go ahead and fly it. And the final results out of it, let's take a look, and we're actually gonna take a look at the video together. So um, I thought this would be fun to talk through the video and talk about what's going on in the video. So we are now switching over to the video here, and we're just gonna play this through. So the location is no secret, it's uh, 3470 Lee Circle. It's a new development called Winfield at the Ranch. So what we're looking at here is August 24th, and we've got a lot of new things going on. So previous flight, we did not have all of these front buildings up. And so now I actually go into the video and I took some of July 20th and now we're switching to August 24th. See that dramatic change? So we had a concrete pad that now has a building that's gonna be three stories. Same with the back of the property here, there was another concrete pad and now there's a three story building there. I was wondering when I first flew this on behalf of the clients, if there were going to be some two story buildings and one three story building, but as it turned out, we've got a bunch of three story buildings and some smaller buildings as well. Once again, July 20th and now August 21st. Look at that change, incredible change in progress in a month. I think maybe we should have done these every other week since this is an experiment for the client, right now they only wanted to do once a month. And there you can also see the new buildings that have gone up since July 20th. Also, pavement part way up. My first visit there was a dirt lot, of course. And then I also wanted to show off by doing an overhead what happened on July 20th, which is just set up for the foundation of the building. And now looking down, it's two stories moving toward three stories. Same with the next building, that was not completed. This building was completed to three stories. As you can see though, we're getting the whole job site in. They wanted some straight shots down. They wanted presentations of the buildings and they wanted to be able to see everything in the surrounding area as well. And so we're just flying back again and we've got several three-story buildings in here now. So huge changes in only a month's time. Very simple and easy for all people involved with the project to see how far they've come in literally one month's time. Well, actually, you know, July 20th to um, August 24th. And then I went with the flight up the middle again. And on my previous video, this was concrete pads and only a couple of almost finished buildings. So there's been a lot of change here and, you know, a lot of growth. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's happening in, in the next video set as well, my next video out there. But so as you can see, several different flight paths, several different pre-programmed routes, and then we let the drone do its thing, but we're still keeping an eye on it. I also wanted to show off the back buildings here because there are a couple of smaller buildings as well with what look like garages maybe. And since I kept the flight path, you can tell I didn't mean to cut off this area, and I'm probably going to be editing this, but the previous flight path had shorter buildings that I didn't realize would all be three stories, so I flew it at an elevation anticipating shorter buildings up in the front. Still gives you a great idea of the massive change going on, but I think this is gonna be one video part that I actually skip out on and do some edits and pull some other video in. Now, not only did I get all of that done, but I also managed to, um, to get their web page up. So I do actually present my, my um, final progression report to my clients using web pages that I've built. So I've created some templates for these folks and I'm going to log in here and you're not going to see that part. Oh, I'm on the wrong browser. Well, there we go. So let me pull up the other browser here and I was actually looking at my YouTube channel this morning, but let's switch over to AZ drone and I'm going to go ahead and do my login really quick, but you're not going to see that part. 
Let's see here. All right, so I'm just getting myself logged in. Sorry about that. And there we go. So now let's go to our pages. And I just want to show you really quickly one more thing in the pages. So I have now started doing custom pages for each client that I'm working with. And those custom pages, um, they, they're an extra selling point, if you ask me. So customized web pages can be designed pretty simply for clients where you can actually show off their progression report. So not only are you giving them all of the files, the images, the videos, your time, um, we give them all of the original raw footage and original still photos. And compiling this into an easy to use web page that's password protected means that uh, the principals involved with the project can have access to this updated information anytime they want and they can do it on their mobile devices and they can do it on their computers as well. I was testing this uh, page out this morning and I was doing that on my iPhone which was great. So as you can see first we do some introductory information then we've actually got this particular video for them progression video number two then we've got the job site stills which I did want to show to you really quickly because I found this pretty compelling um, let me just arrow through. So here is the July 20th, and here comes the August 24th. Talk about a major change there. So, so anyone viewing these can arrow right on through, and these are set to four-second timers, so they've got plenty of time to see the differences and the dramatic changes that have happened over the course of a month. All right, so as I'd promised you the other week, I wanted to go through the process a little more. I wanted to show you all of it. So we've quickly talked about, you know, prep for the site, going to the site, utilizing the pre-programmed routes, and then coming back to your office and compiling all this together and supplying it to your clients. So maybe you're using Dropbox or the Google Drive. Um, doesn't matter what you're using. Most likely you're uploading and sharing all of this content that you've created with your clients. I think doing this additional step of creating a web page for them, if you have web development skills, is absolutely fantastic. Hearing back from the clients, they really appreciate this layout, this setup, because it gives people an immediate, um, an immediate feel for the changes that have occurred on the site. Like I said, I wish we were doing this once every two weeks instead of once a month because the progress is moving that fast. We'll see what they say after this one. I've submitted it to them this morning, so they'll probably be reviewing it early this week because they have to present it to their investors and other interested principals. All right, everyone, have a great start to the week. I know I always do these on Monday, but Monday is Arizona Drone Day, so that's, uh, that's part of my schedule. All right, we'll see you on the next video, and I'm not even sure what we're going to talk about on the next one. I've got a pile of topics, and I'm just going to have to sit down and figure out what comes next. So as always, thanks again for hanging out. If you're interested in 3D modeling, scroll down into the show notes below. I do have several classes on 3D modeling with drones, including one on Metashape. The links down there actually give you a discount code automatically at Udemy. So also, I get a higher percentage of the revenue when you click through my links instead of using their links directly. So if you do want to support the channel and you are interested in 3D modeling and 2D modeling with drones, scroll down in the show notes, click that link. The link's already going to have the coupon in it for you, and you're helping to support this channel a little more. Hey, shameless pitch, right? you got to do it sometimes. All right, everyone, have an awesome week. We'll see you again soon.